Rue doesn't know how to wear this, so we're just going to skip it. It's fine. He'll, he'll probably be safe. Dogs don't have coronavirus. We're good. On this week's episode, mm, Gavin is going to do some rear end stuff. <laughs> Not what it sounds. Uh, he is going to install this Ballistic Fab shave kit. Um, and there's a lot of steps to that. So the first and foremost is he uh, has this really great, that's the adjective I'm going to use, idea to develop some tooling um, so that you can shave the ring gear in the housing. It saves you this, the trouble of having to send it out to somebody and have your rig down for several days. Uh, this way you can just get it done in a couple of days in your house and that's awesome. The whole idea behind a shave kit basically is that we can take that 14 bolt full floater and give it the same ground clearance uh, that a Dana 44 has. And that's really awesome because ground clearance is ideal if you're really going to take this thing on a safari. Uh, after he's done with all that, which will magically happen in like 22 minutes, I'm sure, uh, we're going to go to Costco. We're going to stock up some on some toilet paper. It's, this is a great investment, I'm convinced. And we're going to make mass quantities of hand sanitizer, make a million dollars, and hire a real production team so that I don't have to do 9,000 takes of this. This one. All right, and after that lovely introduction, uh, here we here we go. I got that thing all welded up this weekend. Uh, it turned out really really well. Uh, I had fun doing it too. It was it's kind of one of those easy projects to weld. Uh, but here we go. I got the pulley on, and we're, we're gonna start machining that ring gear. All right, here's what I come up with, uh, and this is this was my idea. I'm trimming the ring gear, so uh, I don't have this thing installed in a rig, obviously, uh, but. I mean, I could put it in the rig, but our rig's not running. I don't have a torque converter and stuff in it. So uh, my idea on doing it this way is for a guy who does have it in a rig and just wants to do a weekend project and buy, ordered a shave kit and wanted to shave it. Uh, I think they could do most of it. I think they could do all of it in the rig, uh, most likely. Uh, but, I mean, if you can take it out after, after you do this part, then that'd be cool, too. But uh, anyway, so my idea would be just put it in gear. If like fourth gear, take your axles out, put it in fourth gear and idle it along, and that should be spinning that pretty good depending on what gear issue you have. Um, if you have 488s or, or even 411s and stuff, they'll be thicker than that. That's just a 373 gear set. It's just so I can try this idea and not, uh, it's not actually what we're going to use. Um, but uh, anyway, I just powered mine from a motor. I'm doing mine backwards like it's in reverse. Uh, just so that we can film it, but I, I should in reality have this thing flipped over the other way and do it do it that way uh, But just so I can film it I'm doing it this way and the reason I reason I attempted to start doing it is I tried actually using this Going backwards with my cutter just in upside down, but it, it's too flimsy that way and it, it was breaking teeth So I were breaking my cutter. So I, I, I gave up and so now I'm gonna do it this way um, Hopefully Hopefully this will work. I'll, I'll, I'll zoom in here and I'll show you how I did my all thread and stuff. Stay. All right. So it's just a, it's just two tabs with a, a close tolerance hole, a three quarter inch hole. Uh, that's Acme thread. You could have just used normal all thread. I had happened to have that. I wouldn't have went out and bought it, but I happened to have it, and so I used it. It was a little better for this type of thing. Um, uh, so then, I, so that's just floating in those two holes, and then I just locked two nuts on with those set screws there. Uh, so that uh, when I turn this, uh, it doesn't actually move. It's just it's just floating in there. And then these two nuts are welded to this tube, which is my bit holder that I, I just made it. Uh, and that could be square, whatever, whatever you happen to have that'll that you can fit a quarter inch bit in, you know, rigidly. And then I just put a set screw right on top there, and that's how we'll adjust in and out uh, on it. So so yeah, as you can see now now as I turn this, it just moves that uh, that way. Hold on, my my cutter will hit. So it just slides it along that way. And All right, here we go. Of course, my air compressor just kicked on, so that was that's convenient. Uh, but the we're asking way too much of this uh, quarter-inch cutter from Harbor Freight. Uh, it's just it's just not meant for this heavy duty of cutting. Or heavy of cutting I should say and the skip cutting and everything it's just too hard on it so I, I, I scratched it off for a while and I got down quite a ways but I mean I, I, I had to do it at such small small passes that it just took it was taking too long so I got fed up and I clamped a, uh, a lathe bit on the side like a full-size one with a fixed carbide uh, and and that that worked that worked a lot better But then it turned out my motor wasn't powerful enough so I kept stalling it so then I could only scratch it off again so uh, so anyway, I'm gonna rebuild this thing so that I can 
put in a full size router, a uh, uh, lathe cutter uh, with a removable carbide insert. Uh, and then we'll, we'll, we'll readdress this or redo this again. Uh, we'll make another attempt at it. Uh, it. It definitely works and I could I could have done it had I needed that ring gear. It would have worked and I could have made it uh, got all the way. I just would have had to go really slow, especially once I get out got out of the teeth there. The motor just didn't have enough torque. Uh, and I could have slowed it down to that uh, motor. Uh, that would have helped as well because it would have gave it more torque that way too. But uh, it's just not worth, worth uh, pursuing this any farther for what we're at. Those aren't even the gears we're using. So uh, we're going to move on to cutting the housing now all right here's the saw and the ballistics cover there uh, that we're going to put on uh, so we're just going to look at the saw we're just going to take a couple measurements off of it uh, that's the saw we're going to use to cut the housing off uh, we're going to cut that saw apart and then just use the saw the motor and the and the uh, pivoting point there we're going to cut the base off the bottom so we just need to know the dimension from the pivot point to the center of the wheel the, which is the center of the motor there and then we, we just want to kind of get a rough idea what the uh, offset from the bracket to the cut line is all right here's what i got going on uh so the ballistic kit that's what it does uh it replaces the cover and then you cut the bottom of it off there uh this isn't 90 it's 96 degrees uh, that adds a little bit of complication to doing it the way we do it. But uh, so I took all the dimensions, all my dimensions and everything are off of the uh, off off of basically where the cut will start, and then it's going to have to go away at 96 degrees. Uh, so these four bolts are these four bolts, and then uh, those four are the four that now are in the bottom uh, that that'll, that'll be new. So I just. Uh, the center, it's, it's 12 inches, 12, 12 and 3, 30 seconds inches across those two bolts, but that's not actually the center of the deepest part of the cut, that's 7. Uh, that's what that 7 means, even though it says center line, but it's not. Uh, and then when, when we were playing with that saw, it's not the saw cuts uh, from pivot point to the biggest part of the wheel, the center of the wheel is 9 inches. Uh, so then, then there's that. Uh, so what, what I'll do is I'll bolt a plate down. I'll have it drilled uh, for another plate to go out this way and I'm going to drill it so that we have adjustment in this one and we can get our angle uh, by shimming these two holes to angle it away. So 90 would be straight down. Uh, this is 96 so that, that's uh, like that. So it's 96 so it's actually down that way. So uh, six degrees additional and we'll just do that by shimming those with a couple of washers. Uh, that'll be pretty easy. We'll lay out our cut line there which I have at, uh, so from the center of those bolts, it's 3.097, that's where the cut will start. Uh, and I'm gonna just start these first two bolt holes uh, 0.597 away, which makes an even two and a half. So that way we just have two and a half inches from our cut line to there. So that'll be easy to set up. We'll just keep chopping the saw down and we'll, and we'll get it lined up uh, after we get it 96 degrees. Uh, so yeah, so that, that's that. It, it, pretty simple. Uh, if this works out, this is going to be uh, uh, ma make this a, a really doable project for a weekend project, uh, which I don't I don't think in the way everyone else is doing it. Unless I guess you could just grind it, uh, you know, and you probably still get it done in the weekend. But uh, th this is going to be a lot easier. So uh, this won't take too long to make. Uh, I'm going to go make that now, uh, and then we'll get setting it up. Uh, it's, it should should go pretty quick. All right, here we got it. Uh, so it's the 96 degrees is 84. It's a six inches or six degrees off 90 uh, it, on, on this side because the cut needs to be going away uh, on, on it. So anyway, I just I just used this thing and, and got it square or uh, at 84. Uh, I got my line scribed on there. Uh, I just uh, this thing I made is real symmetrical, so so it's good. And then all my adjustment is in these oversized holes here. And then here's all the shims. It ended up taking six washers to get to that. Uh, a lot more than I thought. I thought it would take a couple, uh, but whatever. It always always does that. Uh, but it, anyway, we had enough we had enough play to get it lined up. Uh, one trick I was gonna show you uh, when I was sitting there adjusting this because everything has the slightest movement back here makes a big big movement uh, out here. Uh, so I just use 
This is a spring center punch. Uh, they actually make these. Oops, I just kicked you. They make these in Spokane, or, or at least they're, uh, the company is in Spokane. Uh, I don't know where, where they make them at. But uh, anyway, uh, I just use these to, uh, to move it around. So you loosen it, and, and then you can just kind of tap it. I don't want to actually tap it, because it's amazing how much... Uh, how heavy or how tight something can be and how you can actually move it around with this uh, just doing that uh, it, it works really really well it's a really good fabricator trick if you're trying to do stuff really precise just bump something up to your up to your line that's kind of heavy or you got it clamped uh, and, but you don't want to unclamp it to move it you can while well, it's clamped you can actually just kind of move it just very slightly with one of these uh, it, I wish I had bigger ones uh, you know with a bigger end uh, anyway kind of cool. They were good and they're not very expensive. All right, Bob, watch out. We are going to make some gnarly sparks. Here goes Bob. I don't need these things in my hand. I always do that. I try to do everything with stuff in my hands. Okay, here we go. Off. Maybe I shouldn't have cut this part off. Yeah, that looks good. That's a diamond wheel dresser for just do it dressing a, a grinder wheel. I'm going to try to cut this square again because it, uh, it it's getting pointy, and then you, you know because the corners are rounded off, and I think it's making it's it's making the motor work a lot harder than it needs to. So as I'm cutting, I'm just going to try to square it off a little bit. That worked really, really good. Uh, <laughs> amazingly good. The, the thing was like pretty much stalled out right there, and as soon as as soon as I squared that off, uh, and it probably roughed it up a little bit, uh, it just, I mean, it literally, you just felt it start going down, and then every time it got stuck, I just hit it again on there, using that as a brace so you don't make it uh, bumpy. Uh, it went right through. We need safety anyway, right? All right, here we go. We got about a half a half inch to go. Well, my motor, my, my, uh, the motor's bottomed out now, so I guess that, oops, I'm going the wrong way. Figure out which way. I'm too excited that this actually worked. I hope it actually did. Uh, I could have put a new wheel on it, probably, and got that last tiny little bit, but I'm pretty sure we can handle grinding that. Uh, yeah, so if that worked out, I am going to be just, just absolutely excited that this, this thing worked that easily. Uh, I'm not sure how long that took to cut. It might have been five minutes. Obviously, I'm going to time lapse it. Uh, well, maybe I won't. I don't know. Well, I'm going to time lapse it. Uh, otherwise, no one will finish watching it and it screws my, with my algorithms. Uh, not that anyone's watching these anyway. Uh, so anyway, I'm going to take this thing off of here. It's just four bolts. Take it off. 
and uh, and then we'll hold on that thing and see see if uh, see if we if, if we did it. All right, so I grabbed the cover and I'm going to set it on. I'm just going to pull it back so that the uh, that that plate is uh, what's determining the the depth of the cover there. And uh, it, amazingly, it just fit perfectly. So I, I, that was really exciting. Uh, the bolt holes just line up perfect. Uh, our, our angle was was pretty much spot on. Uh, it, it did taper away a little bit at the bottom, and I think that might have been the blade flexing more than our angle being incorrect, uh, because it, it's real tight all the way up until you get down to the towards the pinion. Uh, there's the bolt hole just showing you that come that uh, lines up there, and see you can see how tight that thing is the whole way, except for just just down there at the back. So uh, we'll, I'll I'll put a straight edge and stuff on that and see see what what caused that. But I think the blade just might have flexed on our uh, saw a little bit. But it, it's no big deal. It's it's completely welded up, weldable. Uh, we'll weld that thing up, and and uh, and no one will know the know the wiser. Uh, yeah, really exciting. This all worked out. Uh, I, I I can't be more more happy with how that turned out. And you know, all said and done, uh, this project took me, uh, including making all the tooling and everything. Uh, and welding it up and all that stuff. I'm in. I'm into this project about maybe 16 hours. Probably not quite 16 hours. And a lot of that setting up cameras and everything too. So uh, I'm gonna file those edges and we'll get into heating it up and welding, tacking it on there. All right. So here, here we go. Start welding. So I got everything bolted up and I got it bolted up all centered. So hopefully that gives us as much room as possible as, as stuff maybe moves around while we're welding on it. Uh, the iron shouldn't move too much, but the, that plate may uh, move a little bit uh, on, on it. It may pull in or out. Uh, but anyway, so you've got to heat it up to better than 500 degrees and evenly. So spread or move around a lot while you're heating it. Uh, and if you don't, you're going to use 309 stainless wire. That's what I use. If you're going to do MIG, if you're going to do uh, stick welding, you'll, you'll do the same. But there, there are some uh, stainless farm uh, rods that are meant for kind of like farm. And they have a really nice flux on them. It, ends up, it is 309 stainless, but it, it, uh, they, they call it more of like a universal rod. Uh, and it has a, like a quick dry and flux. So if you're doing it uh, overhead especially, it would, be, it would be nice to use that farm rod on it. Uh, and that way, that way you're, uh, you, you're able to weld overhead out of position or whatever. Uh, it, especially if you don't have a, uh, a, a MIG welder that can, uh, crank it up. You kind of got to weld it hot with the stainless wire. So, uh, anyway, so, so, so just keep heating it and keep welding it, keep it over 500 degrees the whole time. And then when you're done, uh, heat it again, uh, so that it all, e all cools down evenly. So you don't have hot spots and cold spots. Just get, just get it up to a nice temp. Uh, uh, you know, uh, over 500 degrees and let it cool down uh, slowly. Uh, if you have welder's blankets, you can throw them over it too and slow it down even more and that helps too. Uh, I'm going to weld this thing until I can grind it so that that, that plate kind of flows into the iron. So, so it's not really, really obvious that, that you just have a plate welded on the iron. Uh, so I, I'm doing that. So it, my welds don't look super nice because I, I'm trying to butter it up so everything will just flow. Uh, so that's that. I, I couldn't be happier on how well that turned out. Uh, it just, it just, man, how slick was that? And, and we could, we could just take that saw and bolt it right onto another housing and do it again. Uh, and and the uh, lathe part needs a little bit of reworking, but uh, once we get that figured out, it, it, again, we can just bolt it onto any rig and do it, do it, and just keep duplicating it. Uh, so that that's going to just be so cool having those things just sitting around, ready to ready to ready to go. Uh, you, you know, so yeah, if you guys are in a car club or a Jeep club or something, and you guys have these, uh, I mean, what to to invest in doing something like this is totally worth it. Uh, I am going to get all that stuff drawn up so that we can have all those parts uh, just available, uh, so you don't have to do all the research and everything that I I just I just did. Uh, I I'm gonna I'm just gonna draw them up and stuff, and I'll have them, and it, it'll be the same cost as if you were to have them cut out somewhere. Uh, what what I can sell them for usually. Uh, so. Yeah, so that, so that was a total total success. The lathe part, you know, we're, we'll I'll rework that thing and we'll get it going ready for for next time. Uh, and we, we will do this whole thing again. And we'll, next time we're going to do it in the rig, uh, all out of position, just without taking it out, uh, just just to prove that we can do it. Uh, that'll be after we're done with the safari wagon, though. Uh, so I got the budget sheet updated. Oh crap! I realized I didn't update the hours again. Oh well. Uh, it was about 16 hours is what I was at uh, on, on added on to that. Uh, and that's including making all the tooling and everything and, and also setting up cameras and stuff. So it's kind of an unfair number, uh, but but uh, I don't keep 
that close to track of it. Uh, I, all the, everything we did this week was optional. That was not required to, to get this thing going. So uh, it, 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 in required, it's no. But uh, unfortunately, my total investment thing doesn't, uh, isn't, isn't uh, referring to that line there. So uh, right, now, right now, it's just showing everything that we bought. Uh, and and uh, one, once we get a little farther, I'll probably uh, change that so that we have both numbers. So you see what was required and what wasn't. Uh, so next week, we are going to tackle the front end, I think. We're, we're going to get going on that and getting that thing uh, up under the car and, and see what we're going to have to do to change it. Uh, so uh, stay tuned for that. I'm going to get the rear end back in the car uh, so we can get a number off to Tom Woods on uh, how, how long it needs, how long our drive line needs to be. Uh, we already paid for that drive line, so we'll get it coming. So uh, anyway, stay tuned next week. Uh, we'll, we'll get going on the front end.